I've started a bit of a feud with romance books on this channel and I want to know if that's justified or not. I want to see if I can find a romance book I actually like. So to torture myself for the next week, hopefully it won't be torture but it probably will be, I decided to challenge myself to read romance books for an entire week. I'm not looking forward to it, can you, can you tell? Before I go off on a complete tangent, let's just get on with the books. Beach Read by Emily Henry. This book tells the story of Gus and January, who are writers, they kind of have writer's block, so they, or January does anyway, retreats to, is it, I think it's called Longshores, I don't know where it is in the US, but various different states were floating about over the course of this novel, so I, I don't really know exactly where it's set, but I know it's set somewhere in the US. They both got writer's block, so they decide to challenge each other to take up the other person's genre. Gus, by the way, writes literary fiction, January writes romance, but it's not as light-hearted as you might think, because both of the characters have dealt with quite a lot of trauma in their lives, but I, I really like how you know why they write the genres they write, just based on how they see the world. January writes romance because she just loves the escapism that it brought her when all of stuff was going on with her family without trying to spoil anything. Whereas Gus is a lot more cynical and so he writes literary fiction which is notoriously depressing because that's how he feels. There's a big stress on everything happening for a reason in romance books and I just, I just like that little touch. I think that's quite clever. I mean obviously it would be fine to just say he likes literary fiction, she likes romance, that's, that's good enough reason but I just, I like how clever it feels. You can kind of tell my enjoyment from the density of tabs in this book. There's a lot of tabs at the start when I was really thinking it would be a new favourite book because the quotes were just landing for some reason. But this kind of petered out towards the end when it became your kind of typical romance book. I feel like some scenes were missing but I'm not really sure what those scenes would have been because I'm not well versed in the genre. I don't really know what kind of tropes and things exist that well. For a book about writing books I kind of wish there had been more about the books they were writing because although there certainly is it just kind of jumps to oh my book sold three weeks ago and uh, I was kind of thinking how did you achieve that? When did that happen? You know? Also January's agent highlighted by these yellow tabs seems to call her the weirdest nicknames. I, I would even suggest that they're pet names. I was kind of wondering while I was reading it is this the real romantic relationship we're meant to be invested in here? Let me let me give you some examples. So we have sugar cube and baby cakes. Just gonna let that settle in. I wonder if Emily Henry plans to write an agent writer romance. This book really reads like book lovers fan fiction. I was really nervous going into this book because I had read book lovers last year and I didn't like it. This is so much better, it's so much better written. It has the same kind of misunderstanding between the two main characters. There are some really good quotes in this book and I don't know, kind of felt a little bit, little bit on the relatable side. This is one that January says when she is talking about why she has writer's block, or at least that's how I read it because it very much feels like it's connected to why she is feeling so disconnected from writing. If she no longer is interested in people, why would she want to write about them? Anyway, I'm spoiling the quote here, you better just hear it before I just paraphrase it. I miss feeling that deep curiosity about people. That spark of excitement when you realise you had something in common or admiration when you uncovered a hidden talent or quality. I also just think like the first page is really well written. I annotated it. But yeah, it's good. It's deep. It's not as light and fluffy as you might think. I actually want to read more from Emily Henry, which I didn't think would happen. Uh, surprising. I'm kind of sad that I didn't absolutely love this book, but I think I would give it a kind of lower range of 4 out of 5. I'm gonna tell you my opinions on Sorry Bro by I don't know who the author was. The biggest issue with this book is that there was insta love. I have to say it because it's true. They could have well been physicists and biologists because there was no chemistry. Is that bad? Anyway, this book is about Na and she kind of breaks up with her boyfriend at the start of the book and um, the characters in this book are Armenian. 
well, most of them anyway, the main character and the love interest are both Armenian. And I've never read a book by an Armenian author before, or about Armenian people. I didn't know anything about the Armenian genocide. I thought that was all quite interesting and handled well, considering this is meant to be a light, fluffy contemporary romance. The two things definitely a juxtaposition, you know, fluffy, light-hearted romance where happy endings and stuff like that occur, and then you've got genocide. The two things could not be more different. Uh, but yeah, the, the main issue is the insta-love. Accusing books of insta-love is like accusing them of witchcraft. But it's true on this occasion. The writing was kind of bland. It read like a debut, I don't know if this is this author's first book, I think it is, but I don't actually know. I didn't really enjoy it. And that's kind of all I have to say. I have n yeah, no thoughts head empty. Hello, I'm trying to make sure that you don't just have the same me in the same position for each clip. But anyway, I finished the hating game, I don't have the physical copy with me, so I'll just stick an icon up there, but I finished this yesterday, and I actually enjoyed this. I don't think I liked it as much as Beach Read. There's always just something missing with these books, and I do have some things that I would like to critique it on. The Hating Game is about these two people, we've got Lucy and Joshua Templeman, and they hate each other. They both work at this publishing company that is formed of basically these two separate companies that have merged in order to survive, and both companies kind of have different ways of publishing books. One of them is very much, it's a business, we need to look at things that sell, and the other one's very much just like, we love books. But anyway, they're both competing for the same job promotion that's just uh, come about, and uh, the first bit is kind of like a workplace drama as they both have all these different games. I mean, the title is The Hating Game, it's not exactly a uh, a difficult leap. They stare at each other and they just try and annoy each other and I, I really liked reading about this but I kind of wish it had gone on for longer. This romantic advancement, essentially they, they kiss each other at like page 100 and I kind of wish this had happened later so we'd get more of them just kind of hating each other. The banter was really good. I really liked our main character's narration even when I spent time away from the book, I returned to it thinking, oh yeah, I really like reading from her perspective. I also think it was very well written, which is good. I kind of wish these games had gone on for longer without any kind of like romantic advancement because it kind of just broke the tension. But something that just really annoyed me was like the teacup chihuahua thing was in this book. Essentially what I mean by that is Lucy was absolutely tiny, like she was like five foot and uh, Joshua Templeman was like six four or something. I, I just, I really hate it when books emphasise just how tiny the woman character is and how tall, tall, tall the man character is. I don't know, it just, it just perpetuates my high insecurity. And I'm not even sure. Also, it's just annoying. Like, can we just have a little bit more diversity in our romance main characters? That would be nice. There's always just something missing for me with uh, our romance books. But on to our next one. Why are her lips so big? They're so big it's actually comical. This one is about London Kelly who is a paediatric surgeon and uh, she goes to her high school reunion and she meets this guy who was kind of her nemesis back in high school. They kind of start this friends with benefits thing that eventually evolves into something more. I did not realise this was part of a series but you can just read them in any order. It's another one that's just kind of meh. At any point I could have just given up on this book and I wouldn't have felt that, like I was missing anything. And that's just not what you want. I felt that we were being told things about this relationship rather than being shown it. And I don't necessarily find that an issue with books. I'm not one of those people who just hates it because in fantasy books you kind of have to sit through the whole lecture about the world building and I kind of like that's fine but I can't do it when it's character relationships. I have to see that through their interactions. You can't just tell me that this is the way things are. You have to show me that because you you don't have to world build when it's set in our world. One thing I did like though was the fact that like our main character is a she works in the medical field, right? And there's a lot of good commentary about the US medical system. I like books that kind of have a science-y spin to things, even if, you know, it's quite real-world science. Like, she's not a scientist, but her job is very science-based. 
I always like that in books, even though I didn't like this. I thought the writing was also quite simple. So I think a lot of this is kind of a case of me not liking it. I liked it more than Sorry Bro, but I still didn't really like it that much. Hello, hello. I'm filming an update. Oh my gosh, it's almost midnight. That is not one of my finest moments. Right, so I'm gonna be telling you about my opinions about what's it called? It's called, it's not called Reputation, that's Slex Crouch's other book, Infamous. Now this one's about a budding writer called, what's her name? Her name's like Eddie or something. And uh, she is really worried because her friend's talking about marriage and she doesn't want to get married. And it's set during the Regency era, so you kind of need to get married because it's like a society thing and uh, you you will be kind of looked down upon if you don't get married and so she yeah she meets this like guy called Nash Nicholson and he kind of invites her to stay with him in his like big mansion house thing uh, not not mansion house the tube station there's, there's no mansion in the tube station unfortunately that would make it a lot more interesting wouldn't it not me struggling to stick my charger into the main supply of power thing. Anyway, this one has quite a lot of reasonably good descriptions of this house. I was, I liked the setting probably the most out of kind of any of this book. I thought the characters were, you know, they were good. They, they had a discernible amount of personality, but I didn't necessarily feel like I knew them. They kind of felt a little bit archetypy, just, just a little bit. There is kind of like a love triangle kind of situation in this and it only got resolved because one of the people in the love triangle kind of out of character was found out to be this like really bad person and so the only viable option for our main character go to go with was this other person i'm not gonna give away plot because it's probably a spoiler you know i was new i was reading i never was in the minds of the characters at any point. It took me a while to read this, but I didn't dislike it. I thought it was good. I liked it. That's about it. So everyone, this was me reading romance books. I suppose we should answer some questions. Can I like romance? Yes. Can I love romance? No. Will I keep reading it? I think it depends, because I haven't found one I really love yet. Anyway, that is the end. And I really need to go to sleep now, because I, I do, and I just, yeah. Good night, goodbye.